Good morning, it's good to see you. Hope you are keeping well. Hope that you had a good Christmas. It might have been different, even difficult, but in the midst of everything, I hope that you had a good and blessed Christmas as you remember the Saviour, the Lord Jesus. Well, today we've got a very special guest preacher, David Sirkham. He was one of the founders of the church back in the 1970s, and he was the first pastor at Mount Elim Evangelical Church. He was disappointed not to be able to preach in the building, but he has prepared a video for us to watch here on YouTube. Now we're going to sing an English translation of a wonderful Welsh hymn, Great Providence of Heaven. There aren't many notices today. There won't be a meeting tonight nor on Wednesday, but on Sunday, Geraint Lloyd will be preparing a sermon for us to watch online. Geraint is a good friend of the church and it'd be great for him to be joining us next week. When I asked David for a reading, I was expecting maybe half a chapter or maybe a full chapter, but David has asked for three chapters from the book of Jonah and he's gonna be preaching from Jonah, that wonderful Old Testament book. And so Kerry is now going to read the first two chapters, and then the third chapter uh, will be read halfway through the sermon. So let's listen now to God's Word, Jonah chapter 1 and 2. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city and call out against it, for their evil has come up before me. But Jonah rose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord hurled a great mighty wind upon the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship threatened to break up. Then the mariners were afraid, and each cried out to his God. And they hurled the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. But Jonah had gone down into the inner part of the ship and had laid down and was fast asleep. So the captain came and said to him, What do you mean, you sleeper? Arise, call out to your God. 
Perhaps the God will give us a thought to us that we may not perish. So they said to one another, Come, let us cast lots that we may know on whose account this evil has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Then they said to him, Tell us on whose account this evil has come upon us. What is your occupation, and where do you come from? What is your country, and of what people are you? And he said to them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, What is this that you have done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you, that the sea may quiet down for us? For the sea grew more and more tempestuous. He said to them, Pick me up and hurl me into the sea, then the sea will quiet down for you. For I know it is because of me that this great tempest has come upon you. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to get back to dry land, but they could not, for the sea grew more and more tempestuous against them. Therefore they called out to the Lord, O Lord, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not on us innocent blood. For you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they picked up Jonah and hurled him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. And the Lord appointed a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish, saying, I called out to the Lord out of my distress, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Shoal I cried, and you heard my voice, for you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All your waves and your billows passed over me. Then I said, I am driven away from your sight, yet I shall look again upon your holy temple. The waters closed in over me to take my life. The deep surrounded me. Weeds were wrapped about my head at the roots of the mountains. I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. Yet you brought up my life from the pit. O Lord my God, when my life was fainting away, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came to you, into your holy temple. Those who pay regard to vain idols forsake their hope of steadfast love. But I, with a voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed I will pay. Salvation belongs to the Lord. And the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited Jonah out upon the dry land. Thanks, Kerry, for that reading. Let's pray. Listen to God in prayer. Our God and Father, we thank you that you are a good God. Thank you that you're a God of compassion, a God of love, a God who has a message of repentance and hope and good news for people of all nations. As we've read and as we'll hear in a few minutes, we thank you that the good news went to the people of Nineveh, symbolising the fact that you love people of all nations. Thank you that you love us. Thank you that you accept us to be your children in your grace, in your love and mercy. You sent the Lord Jesus to die for the world. We thank you for what we've celebrated over the last few days the glory of the Christmas message that your son should be sent to this world to be Emmanuel, God with us. And we give you all the glory and all the praise that we have a saviour, the Lord Jesus. And that he came to this world to show us your glory and that he came ultimately to live a righteous and holy life to die on a cross in our place. Thank you that we have forgiveness of sins. Thank you that we have a relationship with you and that we can turn to you in prayer now with confidence because of Jesus' death and resurrection. He is at your right hand and through him we come to you in prayer. We pray that you would continue to bless us. We thank you for the reminder over Christmas of the birth of our Saviour and Christmas has been different and it has been difficult for many. There are those of us who have been grieving, those who have suffered loss, those who have been alone, isolated, not able to see loved ones. Christmas has been difficult, 
And that we thank you that even in the sorrow, even in the darkness, there is joy and there is peace. Because our hope is not in a general Christmas spirit, but it is in the person of the Lord Jesus. Our joy is in the Lord. And so we thank you that that cannot be shaken by circumstances. It is not affected by the experiences we're going through. Thank you that we can know a spiritual joy because it is rooted in the gospel of Jesus. And I pray that all of us might remember this, that in the midst of everything we're going through at the moment, pray that we would lift our eyes to heaven and that we would know your comfort, your peace and your joy. We pray especially for those who are grieving, that you would draw near to them, and those who are lonely, that they would know your presence with them at this time. We thank you for the opportunity we've had over the last few days and weeks to make the gospel known. And we pray for people who might have received Ask magazine here in the Pontedawe area and indeed across Wales, that you would use that magazine to be able to encourage people to think about the things of eternity. And for carol services that have happened across the land, online, even in church buildings, we pray that people might hear and that your Holy Spirit might open their eyes and their hearts to believe in the Lord Jesus. We pray for people who are listening now. If there's anyone listening to this who are not sure of their spiritual situation, who are not sure if they have trusted in you, if they are a Christian, Father, we pray that your Spirit might work in their hearts to give them true understanding that they would believe in the Lord Jesus and receive forgiveness and eternal life. Would they know what it is to repent, confess their sins, and trust in Jesus' death. And so we pray that this Christmas might be the year in which many, many people receive spiritual life and everlasting glory. We continue to pray for the COVID situation. We pray that a solution will be found. We pray for the authorities, give them wisdom, give them grace and mercy. And we pray that we will soon be able to return to normality, to be with loved ones, to be back in the church building, worshipping and praising you together, and to be salt and light in the community. In the meantime, help us to continue to do all that we can to worship you. And we thank you that we can listen to the words today. We thank you for David. We thank you for his faithfulness over many years. We thank you for the inspiration he's been to us over the last few weeks. His willingness to adapt, to learn, to continue to be a part of church life and to bless others. And as he shares from God's word today, we pray that you would speak to us and that we would hear your word piercing into our hearts and souls. Would we be people who want to make the gospel of Jesus Christ known? Would we be repentant people who desire to love and worship you and worship the people around us? So would you be glorified through today's message? Pray that you'd speak to us and draw near to us in a very real and special way. We ask that you would forgive our many sins. We ask that you would draw near to us and that you'd keep us safe from temptation and that we would know the joy and the love of God and the wonder of the eternal salvation in the Lord Jesus. Be glorified, we ask, in the name of our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning I want to preach on Jonah. Now everybody knows about Jonah. It's a wonderful series of Sunday school lessons. But there's more to Jonah than the actual story. There's a lot behind it. Now Jonah is in the form of a saga because there's so many things happening all at once. They can't be written down all at once and therefore it looks as if it's a, a, a series but it's really these things are happening at the same time. If I give you a, a rough outline of the things I want to emphasize, there are two acts, there are two acts here of rebellion against God. There are two acts of repentance uh, towards God and there are two acts of mercy by God. First of all we see Jonah's rebellion. Uh, he's given a, a job description to travel 500 miles to Nineveh and there deliver a message that God is uh, going to come to destroy them, go and preach against their sins. Uh, what he does instead of going north and then southeast 
uh, along the river Tigris down to the capital of Assyria, which was a great nation in those days, and uh, Nineveh was the capital. Uh, he went the, uh, exactly the opposite way. He went down to the coast and then travelled east as far as he could go on the Mediterranean all the way across to Spain. And that was his intention. And when he got on the ship, he would explained to the people that he was running away and he wanted to get as far away from uh, Nineveh and uh, as possible. So he did this. Uh, deliberately he went west, uh, but it is futile to disobey God. And what he didn't realise was that uh, uh, God had other plans for him. And God was in providence, what we call providence. Uh, he provides certain things. And the first thing he provided was a storm. And it was such a, I mean, these were professional sailors on this ship. But there was this storm. And in this storm, they, they were fighting for their lives. They thought the ship would founder. They actually threw all the, car, the cargo overboard. And they still didn't find any, any safety. And so they went to find uh, Jonah, who was sleeping down below, and woke him up. And he said, oh, throw me overboard. Life is all over. It's all up with me now. And uh, this is the end of my life. Throw me overboard. The sailors didn't want to, but they did. And uh, as he was going down, down into, the, into the water, God provided also a great fish, a huge fish, because he could swallow Jonah alive. And Jonah was now in the belly of this great fish. And it was down there that he came to himself. He came to his senses. Just like the prodigal son who had run away and uh, was feeding pigs in a distant land and said, this is ridiculous, I ought to go home. And so uh, Jonah had the same feeling. It's all up with me. Uh, and uh, he, he, he began to to pray it's very very detailed account in chapter one of uh, of um, jonah's prayer very detailed and it says how he cried to god in distress in distress there are a lot of things he says about his distress he said all your waves have gone over me uh, I, I am in the pit i am in despair uh, and yet he said at the same time there was this element of hope within him and he said, I, I will rem I've remembered the Lord. I've been banished from his presence. It's all up with me, but I have remembered you. And he prayed and he made vows as well. He made a vow that if he, if he was spared, that he would keep his pro promise, his vow. And then right at the end of uh, chapter two, you have this fantastic statement that came out from him. Salvation is from the Lord. Only God the Lord can do certain things. And uh, salvation is one of them. If we hope to be saved, if we want to be saved, it is only through God and his grace, and his mercy, kindness, love, that this can happen. We can't do anything for ourselves. It has to be done for us. And so what we find here is that at the end of his prayer, that uh, we read that God came to him in mercy. The reading continues in chapter 3. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey in breadth. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey, and he called out, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They called for a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. The word reached the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth and sat in ashes. And he issued a proclamation and published it through Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything, 
Let them not feed or drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth, and let them call out mightily to God. Let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Who knows, God may turn and relent and turn from his fierce anger so that we may not perish. When God saw that they did, how they turned from their evil way, God relented of the disaster that he said he would do to them, and he did not do it. Thank you very much for that reading, because uh, I didn't want to give the whole story away in one go. Um, so we have the story, the chapter 3 has been read, and it's remarkable that in, the chapter, in, in chapter 3, as in chapter 1, the first two verses set the scene. And, and here we have in chapter, uh, in chapter 3, uh, the word of the Lord came the second time, go to the great city of, N of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Now, in chapter 1, he was merely told that he was to go there and preach against the city because of the wickedness uh, that was there. We have now a more detailed message but we do not know as yet what the message is. But we can we can assume it's not only judgment that uh, Jonah is to preach, but also there will be this element of repentance. I want to emphasize, possibly more than anything else, in chapter 2 we have Jonah and his repentant attitude. In chapter 3 we have the repentance of the people of Nineveh. So, uh, he now goes north and then he travels down the river Tigris 500 miles to the city of Nineveh and it's a very large city, it's 120,000 population and there's a nearby town with 70,000 in it a lot of people around in those days I remember a few years back reading that Swansea was a population of 125,000 I don't know what it is today but uh, it's probably more but it's quite a big place and he walked for one day into the city and everywhere he came across people he told them this message that God was going to judge them and that the city would be destroyed in 40 days. Now what happens here is that uh, the people believe God and that's very important the people believe God it's, he's only met the people so far. He hasn't come across too many uh, of the uh, top echelons of the society. Uh, and immediately they begin to fast and wear sackcloth. But we read uh, very soon after that that the word came to the king. And the king was there and he uh, issued a decree. I'll read the decree to you. He said, do not let any man or beast, herd or flock, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Who knows? God may yet relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. Well, that's a tremendous way of showing repentance. Now, it's outward, of course. There are some parts outward. The wearing a sackcloth, going without food. But you see, what is important is not that they outwardly show it, but that inwardly they do it by turning away from their evil ways. Remember, God says, your ways are not my ways. My ways are higher than your ways. And uh, these people realized that. And although they didn't worship the God of the Bible or the God of the Israelites in those days, they had plenty of religion. They knew something about religion. But they now believed in the God of heaven. And this is how they acted and they changed their ways. We read about uh, these po points there. Very, very important to notice that they were going to turn from their evil ways. Now, this is something uh, we need today. People need today to turn from their evil ways. P 
people need to turn back to God because they've been on a on a sort of a, as Jonah was going away from God and the whole idea of conversion is that you turn back and return to God and this is what what they were doing uh, I'd just like to re remind you of a couple of uh, uh, verses from a very well-known uh, Welsh hymn uh, when uh, we look at this thing he's when the king says who knows who knows perhaps god may relent perhaps we don't know who knows poya oir na olchir in vinai poya oir na bada beu and the next him goes on to say more he said ais ais mediginiai is there is there hope is there help for these things and ois uh, meddiant am um, bo by and immediately you get the answer to this is is there is there any forgiveness for all of my sins ois meddiw or nev an egler mi dar perais a berth llawn there is there is uh, I have prepared a great sacrifice. When you look to Calvary, you'll find there my sacrifice, where Jesus died to forgive all sin. And so uh, what we read here is that when God saw what was happening in Nineveh, when he saw that the people from the top to the bottom had repented, not only outwardly, but inwardly, that there we read about God, that when he saw it, he had compassion and did not bring the judgment that he threatened against them. Now, very quickly, I've gone through the main story of Jonah, how he was given a, a job description, he was given a work to do, uh, he didn't like it, he, he knew God was so much different from him he knew god was merciful whereas he wasn't he wasn't exactly a forgiving man and he said i don't want to have anything to do with that and he went the opposite direction but god through his providence brought him back gave him a second opportunity he went to nineveh he preached and the people repented and god had compassion upon them now from that I want to take a big jump of uh, about 700 years uh, to the time when Jesus Christ came to earth. You read about him in the four Gospels and uh, in one particular passage, just three or four verses, he brings out three points about Joel, Jonah in particular. You see, very often Jesus spoke about the law of Moses and the prophets. Very often he spoke about the prophets, even quoting them. And he always affirmed them. But only on one occasion did he ever compare himself with a prophet. And I'm not giving any prizes for guessing who the prophet was. He was Jonah. And uh, we read uh, uh, these words in Matthew's Gospel and in chapter 12. This, this is this is what we read. Then some of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law said to him, Teacher, we want to see a miraculous sign from you. Jesus answered, A wicked and adulterous generation asks for a miracle, miraculous sign. But none will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the huge fish. So the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Of course, he's referring there to his death and resurrection three days later. And we need to remember that when we, the, all the Gospels finish up with a huge amount of content on the death and the resurrection of Jesus. And this is the heart of the Gospel. This is the, 
the fulfillment of the gospel, fulfillment of all the Old Testament prophecies. It's the completion of the work of grace that God has ordained to bring salvation and help to men and women in this life. And when he does this, he brings these signs. I want to just read a couple of other verses to you because these are verses which Jesus himself speaks about his death. Now Jesus was going up to Jerusalem. He took the twelve disciples aside and said to them, We are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death. They will turn him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified. On the third day, he will be raised to life. That's a tremendous passage. And uh, there's another one uh, by the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians uh, where he's, he speaks about the gospel that he preached to the people in Corinth. This is what he said. For when what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised to, on the third day according to the scriptures. So this is all very important. When Jesus compared himself with Jonah. He said, Jonah spent three days, three nights in the great fish, and I will spend three days in the heart of the earth before he was raised from the dead. The second point that is brought out in this verse is this, that um, when he was speaking about Jonah, uh, he spoke also about the Ninevites. He said, the men of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah. Repentance has been preached from chapter 3 to the last chapter of the Bible. And uh, it's a constant message. The first time Jesus preached in Mark's Gospel, he concluded his sermon by saying, repent and believe the gospel. This is important. Without repentance, there can be no salvation. Without repentance, there can be no heaven. There can be no forgiveness of sins. But there must be repentance and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. How, how awful to think that some of these terrible people in, the, in, in Nineveh and terrible people who have lived in our days who have repented, they will stand up and condemn us. And talking about the, even the, we're not all bank robbers and so on, but we've all sinned in our hearts. There are many, many lists of them. And uh, it all shows how evil, sinful, wicked man can be. And these people will stand up and say, listen, you heard, you, uh, you heard Jonah, you heard Jesus Christ preaching. You heard the Apostle Paul preaching. You heard Stephen Jones preaching. And you have not repented. What a condemnation when we could have. And the third point is, it says in here, I've been speaking to you about Jonah. And Jonah was a great prophet. Jonah did a wonderful work in Nineveh. But there is one greater than Jonah here now and he was speaking of himself because when you can compare jesus and jonah all jonah could do was to preach the message that was given to him jesus could bring the answer to that message jonah preached repentance and god alone could give mercy and we find the same thing when Jesus was there. He said, I have power to forgive sins here upon earth. This was the power that he had. Jonah 
gave his Jesus gave his life to forgive our sins. And we read about this uh, so many times in the gospel. Uh, and if I say the last quotation I'll give you is when people came to Jesus, they had a question. They said there's been a huge natural disaster. And a big building has collapsed and a number of people have been killed. Tell me, were they the worst people that lived in that area? And Jesus said, no. That is what we call a natural disaster. But unless you repent, you, like them, will die. Not in the same manner, but the same end. You will die. You may be 70, 80, 90. Uh, one of uh, um, the great uh, writers died yesterday. He was, in 90, uh, was he 89 year old John Le Carre. A fantastic writer. And he died at that age. We read uh, a few years ago, uh, a few months ago, about one of the soldiers, I think he was 107 years old, one of the last soldiers that fought in the Second World War. And uh, so, you know, we read about these people, however long they live, they will have to meet with God. There will be the final judgment. Jonah spoke about it. Jesus speaks about it. It is all through the Bible. And we need to remember that great point. Now our closing hymn, our closing hymn is number, well it's 812 in our book. Thank you David. Well the book mentioned by David of course is Christian Hymns and 812 is Facing a Task Unfinished. And so we're going to end this service now by listening to this hymn. David has asked me to read verse 3. We bear the torch that flaming fell from the hands of those who gave their lives proclaiming that Jesus died and rose. Ours is the same commission, the same glad message ours, fired by the same ambition to you, we yield our powers. See you now, it'll be 2021. So may you know a happy, peaceful and blessed new year. I'd like to read a few verses to finish from Isaiah 41. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen.